Welcome to the Waffle Shop Podcast Unfiltered with me, Taylor James. And me, Emma Tyndall. This is the podcast where we delve into the weird and wonderful. Where no concept, conspiracy theory or conversation is off limits. So join us as we open up shop next door, turn the base up. And have even more of a waffle. You are right? <laughs> you? I feel like it's been ages since I've seen your face. How are you? Not too bad. I'm stressed today. Why? We'll get into it with the weekly waffle, but I'm just going to launch straight into it. Wi-Fi, yeah. Emma. Wi-Fi. Oh, no. Do you know, do you word, know when I received my new router 25 minutes ago? Bloody hell, that is stressful. So I've literally, I'm, I'm dripping in sweat. <laughs> I had to go to my neighbours to pick up the router to get back. The first time I knocked, they weren't in. So I had to go back. Now it's like, obviously it's working. I need to stop winching. We're here. We're here. <laughs> How are you? Uh, a bit, a bit all over the place, actually. You know, when you just, I feel very scatty the last few days. Oh, I love that word. I know. You know, you put things down and you lose them. And then time suddenly becomes this kind of orb of things and just disappears without warning and my phone company charged me an extra 30 dollars for a call to america didn't make so to be honest taylor (laughs) technology is just this is not treating us well (laughs) so is it sad or is it sweet taylor now about to find (laughs) out emma (laughs) Uh, yes we are so i have one for you this week um beautiful oh for any new listeners is it sad or is it sweet is the segment where taylor and i tell each other a story and the other one has to determine whether it was sad or sweet it's kind of in the title guys but i'm just running it by you uh <laughs> in case anyone gets slow today yeah <laughs> we're the problem um, today it's not them it's us <laughs> we're always the problem god okay so Today's story is my mum called me and she's like, I'm going through all of our things from home, going through boxes, la 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 la. And she came across all of my um, paintings and stuff from when I was like three. And by paintings, I'm talking, you know, hand on a piece of paper, which yeah. scribbles Emma underneath it or a stick man in the sun or swings. Don't know why I had a thing for swings back then. Swings everywhere. <laughs> Anyway, she's showing me the stuff. and um... Like as an adult, you still have a thing for swings <laughs> for that episode with Annabelle. <laughs> Let's not turn this, okay, naughty, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, she was like, well, uh, what do you want me to do with it all? And I really want to keep it because it's like cute and sentimental. And then she went on to say about my Sylvanian families did you have a Sylvanian family? Yeah, exactly. And she's like, well, they're just taking up a lot of space. Like we should probably get rid. And I'm like, no, 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 no. That's like my childhood. So you can't, you can't do that. So um, basically Taylor, is it sad or is it sweet that I refuse to get rid of any of my childhood possessions? Um, oh, this is a mixture. Sometimes depending on what it is, I think it can be quite sad. But mm. I think stuff like that, like you do want to remember, like because you can't remember those things. Like you can't remember doing those handprints and stuff like that. Mm. Well, if you can, you must have like a very good memory. But I think stuff like that is quite sweet. I'm going to throw another S in there, as I sometimes do on this. I swear to God, if your mum throws out those surveilling your families, <laughs> they, do you know she is sitting on a gold mine? <laughs> honestly mate we had like the whole village as in we had like 20 families the hedgehogs the deers the mice the squirrels we had the camp van we had the school we had the hotel we had the department store like okay now I'm it's talking sad now it's sad years- <laughs> <laughs> the look on your face <laughs> i love them i played this is another is it sad or is it sweet i played with those until i was 15 15 Girls were going to town and buying bras. I was at home playing Sylvanian Family. So just want to like clarify that. <laughs> no, I, I <laughs> don't think, even. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm not even going to try and answer that one. But I think it's a mixture to the original okay. one. It's it's a real mixture. But I feel like it should be your parents who wants to keep that stuff, not you. <laughs> so in that respect, I think it's quite nah, sad that your parents want to throw it away. <laughs> they're like, she's fucked off to Canada now. She's not coming back. We may as well just wipe her out. 
this is going to be an inspiring one, ladies and gentlemen. We've got an absolute belter of a guest joining us today. But before we bring him in, I think it's worth mentioning, Emma, what today's theme actually is. Today's theme, Taylor, is all about determination. Um, a word which gets thrown around quite a lot at the moment, especially in the whole self-development space, which we are both sort of one foot in the door in, one foot mm. in the door, run away as fast as you can, because if Dip I see one tarot. more inspirational quote, I'm going to self-combust. <laughs> um, but I digress. Determination, as described, well, there are several definitions, obviously. I think we all know what determination is, but it is defined as a firmness of purpose or firmed and fixed intention. Would you say you're a determined person, Taylor? I never used to be until we entered podcast land. When we were discussing the theme and discussing, obviously, what we were going to kind of talk about on the show, especially with the guest, it kind of raised a, another question for me in terms of like, quite a lot of us wait until something really bad to happen to make a change. Mm. And I feel like whether it was the pandemic or everything that happened with my mom, it's kind of made me determined to make the most of what I've got left because mm -hmm. none of us know what's going on. So I don't think I ever used to be until I was faced with a certain situation. Then I was like, oh, well, I'm determined now to be the best version of myself, to do what makes me happy. And that, that could be anything. It's, it's bizarre. What about you? Mm. Are you determined? Yeah, that's that's a really good point. It's like fight or flight in a way, isn't it? When something happens mm -hmm. like that and then you're like, as you said, step back and sort of look at what you're working with. Um, I've always been very determined because I think I, I come from a really sporty background. Mm -hmm. And so I always want to win um, potentially to my detriment. I think sometimes I'm too determined and just don't let the, I mean, that sounds really wanky to say, like I have too much determination, but I honestly think it is one of my biggest failures yeah. because I get so embroiled in like being the best and wanting the best that it can be quite negative um but is that a bad thing though because like yeah. you said that in quite a negative way don't like, get me wrong do you it's want great. what's best for you you do but I think there is definitely a level of having of it of it being all consuming it's kind yeah. of like we were touching on last week about perfection, you know, always striving for something, mm -hmm. always wanting something more. And I was actually listening to um, the Diary of a CEO podcast, Stephen Bartlett's interview with Lewis Capaldi. Yes. And he was saying how he was not determined at all. And actually all he wanted to do was just make enough money to be a singer. And now he's obviously one of the most famous pop stars in the UK mm -hmm. and worldwide and whatever. And it's like, where does determination, where does a healthy amount of determination look? Because he also says in that podcast how lazy he is. And I am like, that's so interesting because you're so successful. So clearly determination doesn't equal success, but yet everything you read online is like, you will only be successful if you're determined. So I think it's really interesting. Really good point. Because it is that you just raised that kind of question, doesn't it? When purely as an example here, like by your standards, I might seem really lazy, but whereas you are obviously very kind of active and you're very kind mm. of like, like on the go. And it's, I feel like it's this whole kind of like compare comparison mm -hmm. conversation then creeps in, doesn't it? Because it's like, well, it's the version of success. It's what, what makes you determined? What drives you actually? What, what lights, what lights Emma's fire? It took me a long time to realize this, but probably a uh, connection. Ooh. Yeah, I think that's my um, that's my light, if that makes sense, yeah. in the least wanky way possible. I think that's what drives me. Making connections with people, putting content out, which, like, if I have a great conversation with someone, I'm like, oh, I want to share that. Well, what that's about what you? life's all about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd probably agree to a certain level. I think it's quite difficult, especially in the kind of line of work that we do, to mm. kind of stay determined because I mm -hmm. feel like you could have like a week where you're like yes it's going great this is going good and then all it will take was one kind of negative comment or a self-doubt and then your determination's gone for sure yeah 
But I mean, stripping it all back, though, I'm really glad that we've got the guest who we've got coming on today because yeah. we're talking about determination in a very, I guess, vanilla, if you call it that, sense Definitely. of, you know, getting up in, in the day and doing, beige, and doing our best. Beige, as like to call you. Beige, beige. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a very beige sense. Whereas the guest that we've got coming on today is determined because his life is on the line and I think that just throws the word determination to a whole nother universe so obviously today we're joined by Ian Ward also known as the king of chemo he's a personal trainer who was diagnosed with stage three terminal brain cancer in 2019 and yeah he is literally the definition of determination in a human being since the diagnosis he's been campaigning and raising money for cancer research running marathons growing his channels in order to get sponsors and basically saying a big fuck you to cancer and i can't wait to talk to him today i don't know about you i'm so excited i've wanted to waffle with this guy for quite a long time i think he's generally one of the most inspiring determined people and mm. i'm really excited in a weird way to hear his journey being dealt that kind of blow must have been like devastating you, you, you know what i mean your, your life is pretty much like on the line like you said so i kind of want to know what keeps the determination like what keeps mm. his fire burning so yeah i'm very very excited for this one yeah for sure shall we shall we bring ian in let's go Welcome, Ian Ward, or the, the King of Chemo. Welcome to the Waffle Shop. Thank you for having me on. I should have brought my crown. It's right there, but no, well, I'm I'm hooked in now to the Matrix, so I can't. <laughs> Looking very professional, I might add. Very yes, Boohoo has just uh, <laughs> delivered a load of uh, suit jackets and pants, and I'm trying them on so that they uh, they fit right, and they kind of do. Pants are too tight, and then the jacket is too big. <laughs> I feel that. I'm, I don't even wear a suit at my... Yeah, I need to start going to the gym. But speaking of like the gym and kind of determination overall, I cannot think of anyone better to have a waffle about determination with than yourself. Like, we'll get into your journey in a sec, but like, you are literally, your face should be in the dictionary <laughs> and uh, determination. Like, what card you have been dealt? to still kind of have this fight and this fire i'm going to start off by saying it but like i'm in awe of your kind of like your drive your determination and just you in general so i'm very excited you're gonna make a statue that. of me yeah. Yeah. A, shri yeah. a shrine he's already he's got one actually on his desk <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's gonna show you let's get rid of this buddha let's put this in <laughs> uh, what i wanted to kind of hear from you in your words like how did this journey start? I did think of it pretty much straight away after I got my prognosis. Yeah, you've got a, a we've had a proper look at the tumor that we've removed that it is cancerous. So you're going to uh, probably not live as long as expected. It's not the worst case scenario that we had predicted, but it's certainly not uh, particularly good news. So I, I had already kind of planned to change my, um, social media account which was just a really basic playing video games thing you know nothing special wasn't especially popular it was just a way to me to like make playing video games into something that's a little bit productive as opposed to just ah, all day long <laughs> and uh will lie to myself and say that it's productive when really it isn't it's just like you know i learned to edit as well on top of that and waste more, more time but um yeah once i found out that it was a uh, really serious i was like all right well fuck it i may as well just sort of crank it um crank it up with the intensity of the situation has increased. So I'm going to intensify the the charity side of things. And it's easy to stay like having a fun with it. Cause I don't, I still don't have uh, symptoms. So there's nothing that uh, the chemotherapy uh, slowed me down quite a lot, but that's to be expected. So it's sort of like going on the piss and the next day you wake up with a hangover like no one's shocked about that no one's like oh god i can't do you know xyz it's expected so it was the same thing with the chemotherapy it was expected that there would be downs and then it would fade away and then uh, you could um rise back up i've always been a creative person but i never really sort of flexed it so much and now 
it's just a great time to be doing that sort of thing to kind of have like a, a renaissance at the you know early 30s to start just doing whatever he wants all the time <laughs> yeah for sure i love that you just compared doing chemotherapy to having a hangover i think that's the first time i've ever heard that <laughs> been said um but as taylor said before you know your story is it, it's unique and um i just for our listeners who maybe don't know your story so well it was actually by accident wasn't it that you got diagnosed so oh yeah that must have been really shocking as well right like it just came out of the blue as you said no symptoms or anything yeah zero and also the previous medical trial that i was in i rarely do them back to back because um it's always sort of to do with both when um a a research sort of uh i don't know what they call the patients that they're looking for um fit with me which is just like you know healthy person, age, this to this, male, female, you know, whatever, sometimes it doesn't matter. And uh, so for me to have that straight after one as well, because normally it's like, you know, you have to wait three months at least. And then it's also uh, what kind of treatment. It's just, it's rare, basically. I'm going on a tangent here. But I, I did one straight away afterwards because it also in line with me uh, not having work. And then... Uh, the previous one, we were doing something called a CT test, which is where they put on something that kind of looks like a scrum cap and they have like these little um, sort of electronic nodes or whatever you call them. And they detect your brain waves. And even while they were like looking at my head, nothing was detected. And then it was that when we went in for the second scan, we needed to go in for a, a full MRI. And it was when they saw the MRI that they said, there is actually something in there. So the chances of me discovering this are so, so rare. It's incredible. Hence why I keep calling myself the luckiest unlucky man in the world, because it's like, it, even down to, due to its aggressive um, accelerated growth that they got from the first scan compared to the uh, second scan, they said that it's quite likely that this tumor was very new when we when they first saw it. So to catch it before it got to a place where it would, you know, destroyed my life is again, <sighs> chance of one in a million, perhaps. It's, it's one of those things and it's kind of like, it depends on your mindset. And this is one of the questions that I kind of, I, I will get to um, later on, but you can look at these kind of situations where you've just been dealt with this very life changing news and which I imagine would have raised a lot of questions for yourself, but to see someone like yourself turn it into almost a positive in a way with the work that you're now doing and the kind of the fire that is quite clearly created do you, would you say that that when going through that like it's kind of given you your purpose in a weird way 100 percent. that like part of the reason why i'm so happy about all of this is that i uh, i enjoyed my job i was working as a a um, fitness class instructor i never really wanted a or I never really had like the the sort of the the drive to want to make it into a career that has like, you know, sort of a, a climbing effect. So as I was getting older as a student, as a young man, it's fine. Oh man, I love my job. It's great fun. But then I kind of had this um, ominous feeling of like, where are you going to go? Like, where are you going to still do this when you're 40? Like you got to kind of think of something, but nothing really appealed to me because I hate PT work. Absolutely hate it. I, <laughs> I really don't like being just the individual who's staring at someone. So as you can kind of tell by how much I'm grumpy about the the whole uh, career choice in that, there's not really a lot of things that you can do in the fitness industry that sort of have an easy climb. It's either easy or very hard and you got to like own your own gym or uh, mm. just start up a supplement company or something like that. And they are very, very hard jobs to do or be a male model. And I'm not nearly good looking enough for that. You've got the accent for it though. I don't think that helps being a model. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to help you out. <laughs> um. No, you're right. It must have been, I guess, I mean, going back to the diagnosis, I mean, that's, as Sorry, Taylor said. I just said, keep looking almost... to my left here, my, my dog is licking me. I think it's the new suit. Here oh, for, uh, what's for her name? Kinky. Kinky. <laughs> yeah, she, uh, <laughs> my mom suggested that as a, as, a, as a joke and straight away I was just like, ha, ah, that's actually a pretty, uh, pretty catchy name. She was <laughs> that's the one. like, oh no, don't, don't <laughs> call her that. Don't call her that. 
and she's lived up to it because she uh, she humps people's legs. Every... Yeah. Do you call kinky in the park? Absolutely. I love weirding people <laughs> out like that. As well, speak to her in Irish, speak to her in German. That's hilarious. Um, one thing I really wanted to ask you, Ian, is that you're very kind of open and stuff on Instagram about the terminal diagnosis of your cancer. And you're like, I, I'm going to be dead in three years, so fuck cancer. And it's it's shocking, but it's also you know, it gets people's attention and it's, and it's, you don't really know how to feel when you're watching it. Because I think a really prevalent conversation is when people say to you, oh, what would you do if you only had a year left to live and things like that? And you're kind of the walking example of that. And I just, I can't imagine what what the fuck I'd do if it was a year, five years. It's like, (laughs) okay, that's like, that's at the point where it's kind of endless. It's like five years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go back to like Stalin's fucking plan. Like, you know, you don't have to worry about that. (laughs) get as much wheat as possible, provide for, for society. Uh, nah, a year, I reckon that'd be a different thing. That'd be, that'd be me, like, you know, going postal or something. But you're so you're so positive about it all. And I just, I, where does that come from, do you think? Denial. Complete denial of the of everything. La, 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 la. <laughs> it's not, not happening. Yeah. I have no idea. I have, I've been very lucky in that uh, I kind of have always had those sort of um, feelings of if something is, like, particularly bad i find it not easy to get over but quite easy to deal with so sort of trains get um cancelled or a ferry delay just off the top of my head something that we often have to do with and then you have to sit in a place for 10 hours 12 hours or whatever i'm the kind of person that just starts looking around being like all right let's start doing something because sitting here looking at the wall is going to drive us fucking mad so I'd be the person that would like find a piece of cardboard and a pen and like start going, all right, we'll play a bit of hangman or something and just (laughs) find ways to get past the time or, all right, well, we're in this space for this long. Let's do, let's like stretch if, you know, let's do a yoga session and not in a sense where it's like, you know, okay, everybody in the room, come down (laughs) here, let's touch toes. But just like put the, put the bag down or take something soft out of the, out of bag and then just like without looking like too much of a psychopath i'd be just there with like my ankle on my knee and just leaning forward and just like doing something that actually has pr- like a sense of purpose to it as opposed mm-hmm. to just getting my phone out and just keep looking at like i don't know instagram until the battery runs out and then go ah now what mm-hmm. do you think the diagnosis has made you kind of focus on what you can control rather than what you can't like I'm not someone who's a huge control freak or anything like that, but I I like in, I I find the power of habits to be uh, the thing that matters quite a lot. And so like I've always been a kind of person who writes down lists and like okay your daily list uh, when you get up um, do this do that and then in around lunchtime try to do this and like every time you pass by the uh, the the bathroom you know do ten. Uh, pull-ups and you know a handful of press-ups some you're not in a sweat but you know throughout the day it ends up that you've done nearly 100 and little things like that like I've always been um very into that sort of con- concept of running on autopilot because mm. so much research shows that we're on autopilot most of the time even when we think we're not and that you know naturally how if you are looking for your phone, you pat your hand and you put your, you know, right hand into your right pocket because that's where you keep your phone. And you know, it's all sort of little things like that. And I think you, you can focus on life in the exact same way. Mm, that's really interesting. Mm. You touched on um, the London Marathon before we started recording and um, how this sort of topic of determination was quite uh, prevalent for you at the moment, obviously, because it's just finished. Um, mm-hmm. What did you what did you mean by that? Because I know that you were trying to raise as much money. Well, that you were trying to raise the record amount, right, for the for the marathon. Um, oh, so yeah, it just made that. it to like two percent of what the world record is. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm gonna you, have to go out again. That as a fa- you raised like what ninety thousand, like, uh, uh, like when I... just a little bit under one hundred thousand pounds. So it's I'm not like you know disappointed with myself. I think I it's, say, it's it's a terrific it's thing incredible. to achieve. But um, I I was predicting that it wasn't gonna do. Uh, it wasn't gonna get up to ne- even near the marker. Uh, this time around. But I also thought that that was gonna happen, and then the second attempt would be far easier because even though um 
I'm going to have to weird it out a little bit because the uh, the London Marathon is not going to be the same time next year. It's going to be in April. And that's a very short window to try and restart the the whole charity thing. So instead, what I'm going to do is um, the Dublin Marathon is on the 30th of uh, October. And so after I do this one, I'm going to make that the next year, the next attempt. So it, the final one next year will be the Dublin Marathon because that's pretty much a year uh, afterwards. I don't like the idea of it being a half a year to the next um, London Marathon. And while the fundraising will drop down, the sponsorships that I have um, started to work with and the followership on the channel will both stay exactly where they are. So next year I will have, you know, be starting at a much, much better place than I was the last year. So I think if, even if I don't do it this attempt, I'm certain it's going to be a lot more than a hundred thousand um, pounds next year. Ladies and gentlemen, determination. Yeah. yeah. You <laughs> In a nutshell. <laughs> That's incredible. Well, best of luck. I really hope that you smash it. And I mean, I'll be donating. Taylor will. I can guarantee you all of these listeners will because it's unreal what you're doing. Wait till it, after the really... 30th. So it gives me an advantage for next year as opposed to just sort of <laughs> going into the pile of yesterday. Yeah, we'll wait. <laughs> Honestly, though, mate, it's there's, there's kind of like one of the, the final questions I wanted to ask you is like some of the things that you put your body through. Like I sweat just watching you on Instagram, not like, <laughs> not like in a weird way, but like <laughs> <laughs> he's got the shrine, sure. yeah. he sweats yeah. <laughs> perfectly <laughs> still. And just... oh, God. Um, um, thank you for joining us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, like because obviously I've, I've like, always liked doing that. Some challenges. What what keeps it going? Oh well, like I've always loved doing uh, stuff like that, so it's nothing um new it's just now there's more of an incentive because you know you could if you if someone was saying to you okay how long can you stand up for and that's like just boring very few people would be interested in that sort of thing running you know significantly more interesting but holds a similar sort of uh, idea where it's like why do i want to find out how long i can run for but then when you start adding uh, uh an incentive a motive like, okay, you're doing it for um for charity or you're doing it against your friends or like this is a significant time of the year to do it. Everybody tries to do it on this particular date. Um, it adds like a, a weight to it of importance. I like pushing myself to do those sort of things. And now there's a, a much uh, more important motive than uh, I've ever had in my life. So yeah, it's it's... I know it sounds stupid to say this because it's not, but it is, it's easy in some ways. It's easy to get the foot out the door. Let's put it that way. Mm. Which is the hardest part of doing anything is actually getting out of the fucking bed and saying, all right, I'm going to do this. That's not hard for me anymore. When someone says like, hey, do you want to cycle across America with me? I mean, like, to be fair, I think most people would say yes to that. That's a fucking fun adventure. And have someone else organize the whole damn thing for you. It's, I don't I don't know anyone who's in their right mind that wouldn't be like, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> I want a free holiday. Yeah. Is there and, anything you can tell us about that? Because I think that in itself is like, that's huge. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you the first negative thing about it. We were originally going to go uh, New York uh, to LA and we were going to do it in the 1st of January. Uh, sorry, we uh, were out in the country in the 1st of January starting on the 5th. And that is because A.D. Phelan's um, father, that is the day that he uh, he died. He died of cancer. Uh, A.D. Phelan wasn't able to uh, go to the funeral properly because of COVID. Uh, A.D. Phelan uh, suffers from um, depression himself. So he's focused on uh, mental health, but at the same time uh, has a strong connection to uh, cancer. Hence why he got me involved. And that's kind of half of the half of the beauty and the horribleness of uh, what we're doing because we both have skin in both games. So recently, I had uh, one of my old schoolmates. Uh, he took his own life, and that was in the in the summer. Luckily enough, though, I was already coming home for uh, one of my friends' uh, family members had died, so I was already in the country. So yes, save money on the flights. And then uh, the other thing was that uh, the 6th of January is uh, a close friend of mine 
uh, it's his 10 year anniversary of taking his own life. So the dates actually match up very uh, serendipitously to uh, celebrate, mourn, whatever uh, way you want to think of it, while we're going to be out raising money for charities that are um, sort of like a Venn diagram. You know, they, we both mm-hmm. have people that are uh, mental health issues. We both have people that have cancer issues. So very, very um, uh, interesting like that. But we were going to start, sorry, I've gone completely off topic. We were going to start in New York uh, in January, which is Freezing, freezing cold yeah now that, that's going to be unpleasant especially riding a bike if i was um running i don't think that would be a problem because um i run really hot if i'm to run in um warm temperatures that's really difficult for me so the london marathon was extra hard uh as predicted for me because it was meant to rain and it didn't it that turned out to be quite sunny and uh, even in october that's that's <laughs> that's a tough one for me to do and then uh we were going to finish up in LA passing through the um, Death Valley in March, which isn't the hottest period of time, but it is very hot nonetheless. So we were going to have these two temperature, uh, climate, very difficult things to go through. And because we're recording the whole thing and making a documentary out of it, um, that adds so much of like a, both a visual and a story pull and an interest so uh, we now can't do that because people have looked into um, the actual ability to cycle through. And apparently it's quite common that they would have like 15 inches of snow on the East Coast of America oh. during the, the new year. And it's like, it's not really a, a matter of, hey, stick with it, like, you know, tolerate it. It's like, you're not really going to be able yeah. to to do this. It'll take way over a year, which kind of defeats the purpose um of what what we're doing so now it's still going to be a a physical challenge but death valley is now we just got rid of death valley because it's not it sounds like you're cheating if you go yeah we're in death valley in january (laughs) it's like okay (laughs) it's not really that hard and then um so uh we've changed the route around because we're now going from the uh, west coast to the east coast um And I suppose one thing that's a a bit of a silver lining from my perspective is uh, when we finish up in the 14th in New York City, very near St. Patrick's Day. And I'd love to see what St. Patrick's Day is like in New York and or Chicago. And the New York Marathon, I might have a place for the New York Marathon, which is the 19th of March. Now, I I have not like uh, said that I'm 100% going to do that because uh, I don't know how long of a break afterwards. Uh, Aiden wants to take until we start doing as much press as humanly possible because that is going to be more important than um uh than doing marathons or whatever because marathons are good but when you are trying to raise money and awareness often podcasts or interviews are more important hopefully we get enough traction that's something quite uh important in america we get invited on to our show like um I don't know, Jimmy Kimmel or, you know, someone who's very well known. I, I, I Probably not, but just like as an example, a reason for to incentivize us to stay in America a little bit longer, that would be my ideal situation because then I'm sure I could have a conversation with Eddie where it's like, hey, I may be doing that marathon and you're not doing it, but this is adding to the story, not taking away and seeing they were still in the same country, no time is going to be wasted. So fingers crossed. That's, um, that's fingers how it works out. Crossed. Oh, mm. I can't wait to see what happens. That's so Hopefully exciting. it doesn't end with a big bomb and I lose a lot of legs. But oh, that's, no. that's Boston. <laughs> don't do that. Well, I'm not going to be doing know. it. No, I was going to say, yeah. Don't... <laughs> I do have one final question for you. And I don't think I've actually ever asked this before, but like, what do you want like your legacy to be? Oh, I don't really care about um a legacy too much. I I would like the idea that it doesn't end with me. Uh, I do quite want to change it into um have you ever seen the YouTube channel Yes Theory? No. No. You know, it's quite interesting, but um it is it started off with a couple of guys and they just wanted to do like weird sort of I wouldn't say 
dangerous, but not exactly on the safe side of things, kind of like vice documentaries where they go to the, the difficult part, parts of the world and just sort of experience it. And it's a, it's a, it's a handful of people as opposed to one person. And so I would quite like to try and change my channel into, um, a handful of people doing stuff as opposed to just me, because if I kick the bucket, it's kind of like, it'll annoy me that the, what has been gathered would then just kind of fade into nothing. I know there's the whole, um, idea of, uh, after art or, uh, after an artist dies that the price of their art skyrockets, but still it's like, if the channel isn't being used anymore, it's a wasted resource. So I'd love to try and still have a, uh, someone who's, you know, sort of on the team and fits the, fits the bill and carries it on afterwards. That would be legacy that I care about, but I don't give a shit about like, um, uh, have me made into a statue of bronze and like, you know, put me up on the top of Mount Olympus and, you know, slay goats. And... this order now. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> order. You said you made it. <laughs> yeah, he's already got one, don't lie. Liar. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a shit on this. <laughs> I ordered the bronze. I ordered the statue. For fuck's sake. Different. <laughs> Honestly, Ian, thank you so much for joining us for a waffle. Like, it is, you're one of the most inspirational people that we've had on the show and that I've conferred, that even that we've connected with. And I'm really fucking excited to see how far you can actually take this. And obviously we will link everything to get as many donations as possible. But again, thank you for joining us. Yeah, no problem. Thankfully, we've now simplified it and uh, we got another website made up. So now it's just the king of chemo and you either putting that into a social media uh, platform that you enjoy and uh, or add a .com to it. And then that's where you can donate. So yeah, everyone, uh, look out for the Dublin, uh, the Dublin marathon. Then that's on the thirtieth of October. Hammering into again. their fucking heads. <laughs> Follow on all platforms, you pricks. <laughs> I've been wanting to say that for years. <laughs> <laughs> There's the real uh, reason that you had me on. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> oh, you're a legend. No, thank you. All right. Well, thanks very much for having me on, guys. It's time for. Sing it, suck it, is it a hit or are they talking shit? All right, it is time for Sing It or Sack It. Favourite uh, time for of the week. Listen, it is, Say it every week. That, just to, every week. And that, just to let you all know, it's my favourite time of just the week. Just to reiterate, guys, this is Taylor's favourite time of the week. <laughs> so this is the segment where Taylor and I read out different song lyrics which we found and we have to establish whether we think they are right and true and have merit in which case we sing it not actually sing it thank god your poor ears would not forgive you um or we sack it if it is false information and words that you probably shouldn't live by it was so, very lengthy you basically it was wasn't it we sing it or we sack it <laughs> it's basically if it's great to clarify we, sing it, we put it in the bin <laughs> yeah, but that's not true because we've had great songs on which we've sacked because they have very poor life lessons that in them. That is true. We sacked Adele so, last week. I know we sacked Adele. Could you could you believe uh, that? Um, have you got one for me? Oh, have I got one for you, Emma? I'm undecided on this one myself. So Ooh, obviously, okay. I, I, I love when what you bring to this. It make, makes me think even more, which is great. Mm -hmm. And it's by the brilliant Cat Burns. Oh. If you mm. haven't listened to already, go and listen to her. She is fucking phenomenal. Um, and it's a song called Ghosting. I promise I'm not ghosting you. There's just a couple of things I'm going through. And I don't want to be a Debbie Downer on your life. So I'll wait till I'm all right before I call you. Mm. Now, it's obviously recently been World Mental Health Day. Like, we talk about, like, reaching out if you're struggling, this, that, and the other, which completely we reach out obviously if we're having a shit time like you do that a problem shared is a problem half and all that however i'm a very i'm very much a person that if i'm going through something i need to deal with it first I've, i'm very aware that i have people around me mm. to help me if needed but at first i do need to ghost i do need to kind of retreat a little bit for me to process things mm. so 
interesting it's a weird one isn't it yeah i think well to be fair i took those lyrics i went to the ghosting thing f- mm. straight first i'm of the opinion that ghosting is it, it's marginally unacceptable because it is so easy to send a text message like it's yeah. literally you do it every day you do it 10 100 times a day all you have to say is now's not great timing um going through some shit i'll i'll text you and whenever yeah. like i'm all for focusing on your mental health and if you don't think that you're capable i mean it's a relationship she's talking about right i think if you so. don't think you're capable of you know or wanting to give yourself to someone because you're not holding yourself brilliant that you've established that but that person on some level probably has a right to know if you if if they're not going to be in your life especially if you're speaking to them for a while you know it's such a good one <laughs> because do i think? don't know wait I what's do. the lyric okay. again the first bit what did I she promise say? I'm not ghosting you. There's just a couple things I'm going through and I don't want to be a Debbie Downer on your life. So I'll wait till I'm all right. See, that also is really interesting because you should not, we've had this conversation before, haven't we? Where it's like, you should not have to apologize for your mental health. However, when I was struggling with my mental health, I'm very aware of how it made the people closest in my life struggle as well because I was a downer on them. Oh, it's such a, oh, it's such an interesting <laughs> one. Well done. Good You're very point. welcome. Because I, mm. I don't know. Like there's there's elements of it that I really want to sing because not necessarily from a ghosting point of view, but more from a point of view where I will retreat. If things are getting mm. a little bit too heavy, I will retreat. I have incredible people around me that I know I can reach out to. And I've got friendships that I'm like, if they know I'm being a bit quiet, I don't have to explain myself. Whereas Mm -hmm. there's certain people that might be like, oh, well, I'm not, you haven't reached out to me. You haven't spoken to me. So I'm not speaking to you, even though Mm. they kind of know. So it's it literally, I think I'm going to sing it. I think I'm going to sing it. Yeah. Okay. It's just the word ghosting. Like, I just don't think it's necessary Mm. to ghost someone. If I've been speaking to someone for like three weeks, a lot, and then I ghost them because I'm dealing with something in my mental health. Like, yeah, that's, that's not fair. Yeah, no, I agree with you that. And I think as much as you have to focus on your own mm. struggles and things, like you also have to consider all of the other people in your life who might struggle as a result of you struggling. Yeah, Maybe that's really bad advice. I don't know. That's just my opinion. What do you guys think at home? Write in, tell us, because that's a tricky Write one. Write in. <laughs> Yeah, send us letters. Emma, P. we can't Box. afford to put the no, heat no. on. They're not really sending letters to Canada. <laughs> Maybe yes. Coventry instead. Well, what are you singing or sacking this week? So this is Take a Hint. I think it's pretty clear whether it's singing or sack it, but I just love this song and it's my like shower song in the morning. Asked me for my number. Yeah, you put me on the spot. You think that we should hook up, but I think that we should not. You had me at hello, but then you opened up your mouth and that is when it started going south. Oh. I don't think there's anything wrong with a guy going up to a girl in a club and asking for her number. If anything, it's encouraged because guys don't do it anymore. Agreed. This song is called Take a Hint because she's clearly not interested in said guy and she basically runs through all the things that he's doing like get your hands off my hips stop staring at my tits la 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 but i think it's a really hard one to navigate because yes you should be able to take a hint but in that situation which i've been in before it's really hard to to politely let some a, a guy down in that situation sometimes and also some people have no shame so even yeah. if you've given them the hint they do not stop some mm. people can actually be quite relentless. Oh, yeah. So I don't know, yeah. even if you were literally s- sending this Spotify link of this song to them, they yeah. probably still wouldn't get it. They're like, oh, they're sending me songs. Oh, <laughs> so cute. They're playlist. thinking about me. Yeah. <laughs> Where it's like, so I'm, yeah, I'm, to be fair, I didn't know how to take it at first, but I'm, I'm singing it because, yeah, one, if we don't have enough honesty, I don't think. I mean, fair play for him for shooting his shot. But at the same time, like, take the hint, read the room. Mm. Like, I mean, you're not, if you've got the balls to walk up to someone, you've got the balls to take the rejection. To to walk away. It's so true. 
or to have the intuition like you know when somebody's into you if you're talking to a girl at the bar and you ask for a number and she's engaging with you and she's making eye contact with you and she's responding to your questions and there's a bit of you know flirty banter Mm -hmm. that's great if you go up to a girl in a club and ask for her number and she turns away that's not an opportunity for you to then go like excuse me did you hear what I said or oh nice ass or (laughs) oh let me buy you a drink do you know what I mean like literally as the song dictates take a fucking hint um so yeah let's sing it yeah no singing it and i hope the person who keeps relentlessly messaging me takes the hint and listens to this (laughs) have you got a secret admirer it's not even secret like the first time i met them i was with the person that i'm dating so they know that i'm dating this person yeah you know what he still messages do you know what I blame for this? Rom-coms. Like 80s rom-coms where the guy only gets the girl because he's literally infatuated. Even The Notebook, which is probably one of my favourite films, Ryan Gosling physically hangs from a moving big Linda wheel Knight. thing at the fair and is like, I'm going to drop off this ride unless you go on a date with me. That is not taking a hint, Ryan. And then it's like, oh, it's one of the greatest I'm love stories. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah, no. But like, it's... that's what we're expected. It's like boys, I think boys think, and sometimes girls as well, are like, oh, well, if I just like push it really far, then one day they'll fall in love with me. It's like, really? Grow up. <laughs> Singing it. Take the hint. <laughs> Uh, well a huge thanks again to Ian for joining us on the show today huge thank you to you guys for listening obviously as we said we're going to put everything in the show notes so you'll find links to all of Ian's stuff here or as he said Taylor as you remember just type in the king of chemo dot com, dot com. anywhere Instagram Facebook the websites thing <laughs> Google that's the one that get in touch chain, donate yeah. he's a phenomenal guy you're phenomenal for, i don't say the fucking word you're phenomenal for listening to this podcast and it'd be even more phenomenal if you could like subscribe give us a nice little comment get in touch send it to a friend why the hell not what have we got to lose hey eh? <laughs>